We've had several requests from our customers asking us how to draw or how to model a ring or jewelry in Bobcat. So, going to this video is going to be a, just a quick example of kind of the process used to do that. Now, as you can see, I already have some shape sketched out here. Now, if you're going to do more complex 3D modeling, you'll definitely want to have a very good understanding already of the 2D items, of drawing items, moving them around, trimming and extending. Now, these shapes, let's look at these. I'm going to make just a simple ring that has a, a prong and a stone set in it, just, just for visual. Now, create three shapes. First, the, let's call it a diamond over here, a rectangle and then another rectangle above or over the top to do a cutaway to create the prongs and also one-fourth or one-quarter of the ring. You can see it's a fairly complex shape. Here I've created just simple 2D flat sketches for the sides for the top and bottom to create a taper in the ring. Uh, half of a circle and then also a circle that's been rotated to meet the angle of the taper. We'll be able to clean that up afterwards. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get started. Let's start with the ring portion of this. So for this I'm going to use a skin. We'll come to solids, actually surfaces, then skin. And we'll go ahead and pick our shapes here that we're going to be following with the skin surface. We'll pick the first line, then shift click the last, and then do the same on the cross sections here. You can see we have a surface that meets the 2D geometry that we have here. Let's go ahead and complete this. To do this, I'm going to create a line that we could just mirror across. So we'll do a line join. And let's mirror this surface with a copy across that line. Now this is half of our ring. Now we could see when we look head on at it that because this arc was at an angle that the shape's no longer perfectly circular where the finger would go. Now let's go ahead and clean this up so that we do have a perfect circle in here that has this compound angle. What we'll do is we'll stitch these items together. So we'll go to our stitching. We'll stitch all of these surfaces together to one surface and then what we'll do is we'll actually create a circle and extrude it and then cut away these tips that come down. Let's do this. Let's go arc, snap. Now the measurements that I'm using here and the sizes were just sketches and picked at random. Uh, if you're creating a ring you'll probably want to make sure that the sizes are a little more accurate than I'm going to use. Let's go 0.625 based off this center and let's move that circle up above the ring. So we'll go to translate, pick the circle that we just drew and let's move it up one inch in Z. And I can see it's above my part. We're going to use this to cut through this shape. So we'll come here to surfaces, extrude curve, we'll extrude that, let's see, minus two inches or extrude it down to intersect with our ring shape. We'll come here to solids, then subtract, pick the shape to keep, then pick the shape that we're going to subtract or take away. Now when we look at it head on we can see that we have the perfectly circular shape that also still has the detail that we had added earlier. Let's take this, we'll do a rotate to complete our ring. Go around the Y axis 180 degrees. We'll make a copy and pick this point to rotate around. And then we'll stitch these together. So there's our ring shape or a band. It's a fairly complex 3D shape. Now let's go ahead and create our prongs. Do this. I'm going to extrude this, let's say 
three quarters of an inch and we're going to put a five degree draft angle with this rectangle here and then let's also extrude this shape which I have drawn above the rectangle we will go the same distance leave a little thickness at the bottom now we'll take this shape and subtract it to get our prongs pick the shape to keep and the one to take away then right click left click OK now we can see here we have our prongs now these prongs if we want to add a little more detail say we can fill at these edges or create more detail in here now for this example I'm just gonna leave this one fairly basic let's go ahead and create the stone that will sit in here before we assemble it all together now I've traced out or created just a very basic shape for our stone yours can be a little more complex let's do this so let's go to utilities rotate we're gonna make some copies of this shape actually I probably only want this to come here so let's do this utilities break we'll divide this line into two objects equal should end right at zero and let's do a rotate now let's say that this is going to have eight sides so we'll do a rotate we'll say 360 degrees rotate all the way around y, y divided by eight and we'll want seven more copies select our geometry right click OK and then we'll pick the point to rotate around and here we could see our shape our basic shape now you may want to do more or less rotations. We only need to draw a portion of this and then rotate that around. Let's go ahead and clean this up so that we create just one portion or one side. We'll just delete out some of these lines. So we're only dealing with one side of the shape. Now after we have these all deleted each side is flat or faceted so all that we'll need to do a create is create some planar surfaces let's go ahead and come here and go to line join and just create fully flat shapes out of this or create our facets now each side of this now can be a planar surface let's do this let's go to surfaces planar We'll pick this shape then right click OK we're going to skip one and then we'll hide both of these surfaces so we can grab our edges again we'll go to blank and we'll create more planar surfaces here and here only one side at a time I was trying to select a little too much there there we go okay now we can unblank these other surfaces and here we can see we have one side let's go ahead and rotate this now with copies with the same settings that we did last time go around zero and there's our diamond shape now all it's left to do is put all of these together let's go ahead and do this let's start aligning these items let's change our colors we'll stitch these together make it a little bit easier we'll make these individual solids so each item here is its own solid so when we go to select it it'll pick the entire shape versus individual faces select this we're going to modify attributes and let's change the color on this to white and we'll select both of these and let's make the color more of a yellow
Now we can take and rotate these. Now if you create basic shapes, if this is something that you do, you can create basic shapes for this that will give you a library of parts to put together. You can create several different size settings, several different size bands, and they'll be easier to put together at a later time. Rotate this around the x-axis, 90 degrees, with no copy. Move this over. We'll just drag it over for now. We'll also move this over. And we'll just place these approximately for right now. We'll rotate this. Now you may want to spend a little bit more time to get some better detail than I have. You can see just quickly put together just to give the overall process. Let's move this down in Z. Move this one up. Now you can see it's a little out of proportion. Maybe you want to scale these items down. We can do that. Come here. And we'll apply a scale factor of, let's say, 0.85. We'll do that twice. And we'll just drag this over again. Hide our other shapes. We'll translate this. We'll just drag it over with a copy. Now, if this was for, for presentation to a customer or a potential customer, I might make a little layout for him, him or her, and rotate these with copies. Just to give a full idea of what this will look like when it's complete. We'll rotate this around X, 90 degrees, and we'll just use drag to drag this over, and we'll rotate this so it faces up. And there you have it. Rotate around Z, 180. Translate this over again. There's just a basic ring or the basic steps that you'd want to use to create a ring type in Bobcat. This item or these shapes can be cut out now using the fourth axis. Or again, if this is something that you do constantly, you might want to create yourself a little library of these different shapes so that it's easier to create the ring. Uh, you want to be very proficient with the 2D before starting, so some of the basic Bobcad lessons may help you with that. And then you can use this as a guide to kind of lay out how you'll approach making your rings. That concludes this video.